Hello everyone, this is Shudhutra and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. Today the topic on which I am going to discuss is a very beautiful poem written by a very famous, well-known and brilliant poet of England named D.H. Lawrence. And the poem on which I am going to discuss is Last Lesson of the Afternoon. Now viewers, before going to read and explaining the poem, let us get a bit of the background of the poem and the poet as well. Starting with the poet D.H. Lawrence, whose full name was David Herbert Lawrence, was born on 11 September 1885 in Eastwood, United Kingdom. Eastwood is basically a former coal mining town in the Broxtree district of Nottinghamshire, England, that is 8 miles northwest of Nottinghamshire. Coming to the literary career of David Herbert Lawrence, he was basically an author, come poet and painter mostly known for his novels than his poetry. However, his poetry is also of a very high quality. His collected works represent, among other things, an extended reflection on the dehumanizing effects of modernity, industrialization, sexuality, vitality, emotional health, spontaneity, and instinct. Last Lesson of the Afternoon was written by Lawrence at the time he was teaching in Croydon, London. Lawrence became disillusioned with the work in England at this time. The government had made education compulsory because of what many peoples had no desire to learn but were still forced to attend school. He felt that time at school was futile and his time too. Trying to teach them was a waste. So he abandoned teaching and became a full-time author. Having known about the poet, let's dive into the poem but first of all let's try to understand the title from the title itself we can easily make out that the events are unfolded in a school in between 12 noon to 5 pm that is the afternoon and something has happened when the last lesson was taught we were we are not aware at this point that the last lesson was of which subject but we can assume that the last lesson would have been the final lesson of the day. So at this point, we know that there is a school, there is afternoon and the final chapter is being taught. So let's begin. Students, as the poem is a little longer, for your clarity, I have divided the poem into three parts, each part containing two stages. So students, let's begin. In the first line, when will the bell ring and end this weariness? So who are the people usually inside the classroom? Of course, it is the teacher and several other students. Now it's either the teacher or the students who are thinking out of the class, thinking about the school bell to ring. Because of the extreme tiredness, because of extreme fatigue, something has caused extreme tiredness and boredom and fatigue, which is why Someone is waiting for the school bell to ring. Coming to the next line, that is, How long have they tucked the leash and strained apart? My pack of unruly hounds. To tug is to pull something. Leash is nothing but a rope. Strained apart, strained apart means forced apart. You must have heard. So, leash is actually something which is actually a kind of rope these are actually used to tie some wild animals pack means group for example we can say that a pack of dogs for example are tied to a particular object unruly is indisciplined disobedient and hound is actually a kind of hunting dogs to make the picture clear to you, you can imagine a group of dogs tied by ropes, tied by a rope and trying to free themselves. So now this is very clear that these are the thoughts of the teacher. This teacher is comparing the students with a pack of unruly hounds. So we also get to know that the students are disobedient. They are not following his orders and instructions. The teacher feels that his orders are forcefully letting the students 
to sit in the class. So coming to the next line that is I cannot start them again on a query of knowledge. They hate to hunt. I can hold them and urge them no more. Now what does the term query actually mean? Query is an animal pursued by a hunter. So here the students who hate to grasp the knowledge from the teacher is directly compared to a hunter who hates the hunt. Hunting job for a particular animal. Meaning of the line that is so let's assume that the lecture or the period is of one hour half hour has already passed its afternoon and it's clear to the teacher that the students are not understanding whatever the teacher is teaching and a good teacher a kind teacher would take efforts and repeat the things to make sure that a student understands but here in this poem in this situation in this case the teacher is disinterested and says that he can not teach them everything again he is not going to start all over again anyway they hate to understand whatever he is teaching this teacher is convinced of one thing that is teaching and learning is not at all happening and he does not want to keep going to haul to haul is to pull or drag something with effort or force meaning he cannot pull or drag these students to keep on learning anymore he does not want to take any more efforts which are anyway futile to make these disinterested students understand what he is teaching this is enough he is done with it coming to the next danger that is no longer now can i endure the brunt endure the brunt is actually a nice phrase which means to put up with worst of some bad circumstances again you can imagine a typical classroom with 40 to 50 desks for the students and in front of them there is a table and chair and there is a teacher who is extremely tired and fatigued the teacher is seated on a chair or maybe standing and on the table there are some papers books and other th stuffs other stuffs so there is something inside the book which is placed on the table which really irritates the teacher now what is inside those books let's see a full three score of several inserts of blotted pages and scroll of slovenly work that they have offered me now students the line that i have read in right now first you have to understand what does this term score mean actually score is not that score which we refer to in suppose in football or in cricket one score is actually of two 20 uh, 20 one score is actually 20 so three score is 60 now as the process goes on the teacher must have given the students some assignments or some paperwork or some homework which the students could have written in their copies or books so as yes, there are 60 students so there are 60 copies of students and the teacher over there in the class is very sure that the pages inside those books will be blotted meaning stained or marked with insert the teacher is certain that the students would have scrolled in their books meaning written hurriedly and carelessly which would be a little difficult for the teacher to check slovenly means untidy and dirty this teacher does not have patience for checking these pages to endure means to suffer the teacher does not want to suffer by checking the assignments which the students have submitted by checking the paperwork the students have provided the teacher will be bored the teacher is very sure that the students have done the works done the work in a very hard way in a very hard manner they have accomplished the work in a rushing manner i am sick 
and what not is the good of it all what good of good to them or me i cannot see this line is actually telling us that now in this particular class the teacher is bored teacher is very tired because of the back to back classes and due to what he is right now not in the mood to take the class any longer he is also saying that as the students are also disinterested not in any mood to attend the class any more he is not in any condition to provide the lectures he is saying what on earth is good of it all what good to them or me i cannot see it means the teacher is exhausted with the long classes and now eagerly waiting for the bell to ring dear friends the third stanza that is so shall i take my last dear fuel of life to heap on my soul and kindle my will to a flame that shall consume the dross of indifference and take the toll of the insults in punishment i will not starts with a question let's understand what the question is now that we already know that the teacher is extremely tired and for there is a little energy left now the teacher is thinking and actually questioning himself this energy that i have left inside me am i really going to waste this energy on these students so there is a metaphor here that is putting some fuel on the soul so that the energy rises the last fuel that is left so the teacher is thinking this last fuel that is the small energy that is left in him is he really going to pour it on his soul which will result in energy which will result in fire just to suffer their dross of indifference that is the worthlessness their lack of interest concern or sympathy there are two things here first thing should i waste my energy in tolerating their lack of interest or maybe going through their assignments and paperwork which has nothing but dirty and lazy work am i going to punish myself by suffering their dross of indifference and scroll of their insults and we know the answer finally that is i will not that is i am not going to waste my energy the little energy that is left in me i am not going to waste that at any cost coming to the stanza 4 the first two lines that are i will not waste my soul and my strength for this what do i care for all that they do amiss amiss means actually not quite right that is inappropriate inappropriate or out of place now what it means in the sentence the poet is again saying that he is not going to waste his last bit of energy that is inside him on these indisciplined students along with that he is also saying if the students do any mistake or even if they write correct answer he is not going to be bothered about that he is actually not going to be bothered about that moving on to the next two lines that are what is the point of this teaching of mine and of this learning of this it all goes down to the same abyss abyss means actually a deep or seemingly bottomless chasm what does it mean in this sentence again let's see the speaker or the teacher assumes that even if he commits all of this energy or efforts to the students on the students he cannot justify to himself the expenditure of that energy his very soul is being wasted in attempts to teach the unteachable he senses that he is being insulted by the students lack of motivation and desire to achieve so dear friends stanza 5 starts with a question that is why the teacher is ask you know, but before understanding the stanza we need to understand why the teacher is asking this question the question is what does it matter to me if they can't draw, if they can write a description of a dog or if they can't means the teacher is no more interested to know 
that whether the students can write for example the description of a dog or not it shows that he is totally fed up with the service of serving these unruly children in next two lines he is again asking a question that is what is the point to us both it is all my aunt and yet i am supposed to care with all my might means he is literally asking the value for teaching this unruly indisciplined naughty careless and above all disinterested students now coming to the last danger that is i do not and will not they won't and they don't and that's all i shall keep my strength for myself they can keep their sense why should we beat our heads against the wall of each other i shall sit and wait for the bell means the speaker has determined that there is no value in struggling to impart knowledge to a bunch of seemingly branded unchains who possess not a shred of desire to acquire any an education this teacher proclaims intention to stop using up his soul power in vain attempts to teach these recalcitrant unteachables he looks straight in the eye and finds no matter what he does no matter what they do it all goes down to the same nothingness whether he teaches or not it does not matter whether they learn or not it does not matter at all so with this the whole poem ends over here but after reading the poem dear friends i have got to know that the whole poem is full of negativity the poem is actually an outburst of the poet as a teacher but this is my own opinion what is your opinion you can let me know by writing it in the comment box you can simply write yes or no so for today i am concluding my explanation over here if you have any suggestion you can write it in the comment box or you can mail me in my email id which i shall provide in my provided uh, provide in the description box now stay home stay safe and keep smiling